Hello, you Muscovites of Maltiness. Hmm, right, so, uh, some I'll mention, and it's introducing Ralphie Review 1036 Extras, and a big malt mention thank you to Whis Whiskey Chap Jim for providing the malt mention introduction. And funnily enough, Whiskey Chap Jim, I wonder if Whiskey Chap Jim's interested in rum, because this extras is about rum. It's about a whiskey, an experienced old whiskey hacks. That's me. Perspective on rum in 2024. And I, I actually buy a significant amount of rum, which I kind of stash up because it doesn't have a use by date. And I always need a number of spirits around my whiskey collection, which are not whiskey. And the one or other spirit that I go to beyond all others, beyond rye, beyond bourbon, beyond mezcal, beyond brandy, is rum. I find rum the most interesting and diverse. Now, the thing you need to know about rum, first of all, is that it is not a regulated scene, right? Now, in whiskey, there is the Scotch whiskey reg regulations, which are not imposed by the industry itself. They are imposed imposed by statute law through Parliament, dating back to the beginning of the 20th century. So you have strict enforceable, legally enforceable rules about bottling strength, integrity of bottling strength, about the ingredients being that are used, um, about the casks being of a certain size and capacity and requiring to be oak and no other wood. So that it's very easy to navigate yourself around not just Scotch whiskey, but Irish whiskey and English whiskey, which by design, well, by default, really kind of follow roughly the same rules. The only exception, of course, at the moment is Japan. Uh, there's a lot of whiskey produced in Japan, but Japan also produces brands of whiskey from imported whiskey from other countries, including Canada and Scotland, and then they claim it as Japanese, which in my opinion is a form of fraud. In fact, it's not a form of fraud, it's just fraudulent. Uh, and I think it's a real shame. But uh, that seems to have been very easily accommodated by the super tolerant whiskey fans, who by, ha by and large, I have to say, are quite a conservative bunch because someone who's into whiskey doesn't really show much of an interest in other spirits. Generally, there's exceptions. There always is exceptions, malt mates. It's the real world. But this is, depends on your experience. And what you find is folk will concentrate for about four or five years on their spirit of choice, whether it be bourbon or Scotch whiskey or Irish whiskey or whatever. And then they'll have an, a notion to try another spirit. And what I recommend, the go-to, certainly works for me, is rum. Rum is the most geographically diverse produced spirit in the world. It is produced in Nepal. It is produced in Nigeria. It is produced in the Cam Ca Caribbean. It is produced in the Cameroon. It is produced in Canada, Scotland, Orkney, the Isle of Orkney, the home of Highland Park in Scapa. It has it's got its own little rum distillery called Jay Gow. Did you know that? I didn't think so. Well, you know now. More about that later. And it's been really interesting here in 2024 to see the emergence now and the, great, the growing niche of British made rums, primarily made from, not from raw cane juice, um, but from re partially refined um, dried sugar extract, basically powdered sugar. And we're not talking about your bleached white sugar here, although that can be used, often difficult to get started in fermentation. 
uh, but traditionally you'd put in a few tins of prunes to get the fermentation going and add a little bit of flavour to the distillate, I have been told. And um, rum, for the whisky drinker, rum's not just a different flavour, it's a different culture, it's a different point of reference. And really, as a Scotsman, being brought up in a cold, wet, grey, windy, drab country. Yeah, let's call it what it is, a drab country. In many ways very beautiful, but also very drab. In which winter lasts eight months of the year. The idea of the Caribbean, this sun-drenched, sea-breezed, intensely colourful environment... It's very enticing, and certainly as a as a as college student, I was never far from a bottle of rum. I, I I got into rum before I got into whiskey. There you go. You didn't know that, and it was your local British style rums, your Woods, your OVDs. That's old vatted Demerara. For those of you, hey, you see that? It just shows you my these lightning reactions. <laughs> <laughs> this is a glass of a very fine Havana Club uh, Selection de Maestros. I will never let it spill. If I die here right now, you'll have to drag it from my clutches. It's just a sort of thing a, a rum, rum swigging pirate would say. Mm, absolutely beautiful. Give me a minute. So beautiful. I'm gonna add a drop more water now. It's really it's doing something magical. Beautiful, soft, almost lavender violet perfume note coming through now. Slightly orchid. Red orchid. Back to the rum. Rum was my first, it was my first spirit. I used to have it with tonic water uh, and also have it with ginger beer. It's what's called a dark and stormy. And then basically the tonic water turned to soda water and there was less soda water used. In fact, I just wanted to get more of the flavour because back in the 1970s, you really got the phenomenal flavours of the rum then because not a lot was sold. People weren't interested in rum because 1970s was about vodka um, vodka and and tomato juice and Bacardi breezers were just being invented then, um, and all these kind of fashionable light and lager, lots and lots of lager. Now, the nineteen seventies was an era of very poor taste for with the with the the general pub drinkers. It's one reason why there's so few pubs left compared to the old days. It's not just the prices; it was just the the culture. The culture never looked after itself. And so what we have now is this kind of much more specialised scene where we look out as whiskey drinkers and we say, right, well, that was then. There was good ordinary rums. Where have we got to look for now? And my advice is go into your specialist whiskey shop because they will also, always, also be selling rums and ask them, speak to them about rums. What you're looking for, if you want to start, um, is Scotch independent whiskey bottlers who are maturing rum in ex whiskey casks. Because it gives you a little bit of a transition. You'll have a rum flavour, a rum identity, but with a kind of whiskey finish. And the fact is, particularly at higher strength, it's unlikely that those rums are dosed. Um, forget Bacardi, it is really, it's bar shelf filler. Um, forget Captain Morgan, particularly Captain Morgan's Spice Rum, which is just simply awful. Um, I mean, it's just pleb fodder. Uh, yeah, 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 you heard me, that's what I said. Yeah. And so, don't even bother with that, but you'll see a lot of brands you don't recognise. I would say start in the Caribbean. Start with something more or less, a good entry level is Appleton Estate in Jamaica. 
Uh, don't go for any of the Hamdens just yet because they are hugely, I mean, they're the Freugs of rum. Uh, also look at Barbados. Um, you're looking at Mount Gay. They're consistently good. Some of the online specialist whiskey retailers will actually have commissioned bottlings of rum, which in my opinion are well worth looking out for um, and represent pretty good value. Uh, also, there are some smaller brands you might re not recognise, like Smith & Cross, which are the favourites of high-end bars in big cities, which want bling brands for expensive cocktails. These are actually pretty good rums. They're also Foursquare. Foursquare comes in a number of guises. You've got McCoy's, very good. You've got um, RL Seal, also pretty damn good. And you've got Durley's. Durley's rum, if you want to buy Foursquare on a relative budget, uh, go for Durley's, go for the XO 12 and the 14. Okay, particularly the EXO, in my opinion. The 14's also very good. The thing about Barbados rum, there are four rum distilleries in Barbados. One of them is WIRD, West Indies Rum Distillers. They're really part of the plantation um, house. And I really don't go for their rums at all, because they're dosed, in my opinion. So you're looking at the two most available are... Mount Gay and Foursquare. There's also another little distillery, but it's this rum is very expensive and it's called St. Nicholas Abbey. Hugely expensive, but you really the probably the best one to go for is the white unaged rum. It is deliciously, exquisitely soft and sippable. Many of these rums, as white rums, are essentially new make spirit that's been rested. This is when you're tasting them, you just use your imagined to say, imagine if this was matured like a whiskey in Scotland. Compared to Scottish single malt new make spirit, which is increasingly engineered for yield, how, which direction would it go? And I think this is, I'm giving a dropping a hint here because this is going to be a commentary as part of my rum season um, on the British distillers, which attending a rum, rum festival, um, again, for me, I find it really kind of refreshing. It's not just a different beverage, it's a different feel, a different environment, a different group of people actually, although I did bump into a number of malt mates and whiskey fans. But I'll, I'll leave that for another extras. I'm going to conclude this video by saying avoid your, West, your, your, your Indian Ocean rums from Mauritius. They're more complex. It takes more time to get into them. The Australian rum to avoid is Bundaberg. It's a mass-produced mixer rum. Look out for uh, Beanley. Um, and just apart from that, just ask online, check out the online rum forums, the online rum sites. They're hugely well informed and they're wonderful, passionate people. And they know so much about rum because they're all interconnect. Of course, there's rivalries, rivalry, rivalries, I know that. But they're all interconnecting and, and networking and all the rest of it. And, you know, it's nice to step out of the whiskey box into the rum box just for a bit. It just, it's just a change of scenery. I'll leave that with you. I'm done here. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, click your likey, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't, because many of you watching haven't subscribed yet, and you want to be kept up to date with all these malt moments and, and rum rascal raconteurings. There you go. See you soon.